Welcome to Contacts. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at how to calculate the future value of an ordinary annuity using the financial calculator, the HP 10B2+. Now, we have done these same lessons before on these examples that you're about to look at. We've done them using the formulas and we explained in great detail how the future value of an ordinary annuity works. So if you'd like to check that one out and many more lessons using this financial calculator as well as using the formulas, you'll find the links to all those lessons in the description below. So let's get into it. The first question says here that John deposits 3,000 Rand into a savings account at the end of each year for a period of 10 years. This investment earns 5% interest compounded annually. Calculate how much you will receive in 10 years time. So we have to calculate the future value. That's what we know because we want to know how much you'll receive in 10 years time. And we know that it's the future value of an ordinary annuity. And like I said, if you check out the one with the formulas, we explained exactly what these terms exactly mean. But an ordinary annuity, first of all, ordinary means it's occurring at the end of the period. And annuity means it occurs every period. So we know that it's at the end of each year. So that's why it's an ordinary annuity. And we know that it's occurring at the end of each year. So the each year there means that it's an ordinary annuity. It's not just one single amount. And we've done that one where we have one single amount and we want to know the future value. That's the future value of a lump sum. You'll find the link to that lesson in the description below as well. So what do we need to do with our financial calculator? One thing we note with this financial calculator is that it's by default, it's compounded 12 times per year. How do I know that? If you press the orange button and you press here where it's written C, you can see it appears briefly there on the screen, 12 payments per year. And here we are told that you are putting an amount into a savings account at the end of each year for a period of 10 years. So we want to have the compounding as one because the payment occurs once per year. Another thing that you need to be very careful about is the interest compounding. Is the interest compounding the same as the payment compounding? If they're not the same, then you have to first make the interest compounding be the same as the payment compounding before you do your calculation. And you'll see as we go along, you'll see some examples where that is the case. So here the investment earns 5% interest compounded annually so it's also compounded annually and the payment occur at the end of each year so that's good so it's an easy one that we can do the first thing that we need to do is to make our calculators compounding to be 1 instead of 12 you can see if I press orange again see you can see it's written uh, 12 per year so we need to change that to 1 how do we do that we just press 1 and then you press the orange button and then you press PMT you can see under it is written payments per year or P slash YR and you can see it's now one. If you want to check, you just press orange and C again, and you can see it's one per year. Now that we've done that, we can do our calculation. We know that it's for 10 years. We are told there. We press 10, and then we press N. And then we've put our number of years. And then the second thing that we need to put is the interest rate. It's 5% compounded annually, so it's easy. We just press 5, and then we press I slash YR. And then the next thing that we do is we put the payment, which is 3,000. So we press 3,000. And then I'm going to put it as a negative because it's a money that we are paying out. So I'm going to press plus slash minus. You don't have to put it as a negative, but if you don't put it as a negative, your answer will come out as a negative because the pay payment or the PMT and the FV have different signs. So if you put one as a negative, the other one will come out as a positive. That's what you need to know. And so I press 3000, I press plus slash minus, and I press PMT. And then I need to just compute the future value. So I just press FV. And there we have it. That's given me our answer it's 37,733 and 68 cents that is how much you will receive in 10 years time if you invest 3,000 rand at the end of each year at the rate of 5% interest compounded annually that was a very simple example let's quickly go to the second one the second one says how much will you have at the end of two years if you invest 1,000 rand at the end of each month with an interest rate of 10% per annum compounded monthly okay so let me clear my calculator i press the orange and i press c again so what are we told here how much will you have at the end of two years so that's a future value if you invest 1000 rand at the end of each month so that's an ordinary annuity with an interest rate of 10 percent per annum compounded monthly now what do we need to note we need to see if the payment compounding is the same as the interest rate compounding we know that the payment will occur at the end of each month. We'll need to pay this money into the account at the end of each month. And we also know that the interest rate is compounded monthly. So they coincide. They're the same. So it's 10% per annum compounded monthly. So they're the same. So it makes it things easier for us. So what do we need to do? We need to ensure that the compounding in our financial calculator is 12 times per year. But remember, we had changed it to one time per year. By default, 
it's 12 times but when we change it to one we need to change it back now to 12 times per year if you press the orange and you press c you can see it's still one per year so we need to change it back to 12 just press 12 press the orange button and then you press here it's written pmt or p slash yr there it has changed it to 12 you want to check just press orange and then you press c again and now it's 12 per year and then we now put our number of years which is two years so we press two and because it's compounded more than once per year you don't just press n you press two and then you press the orange button and then you press n and you can see it's 24. so what has it done it has taken the number of compoundings per year which is 12 and it has multiplied it by the number of years which is two and that gives us 24. so if it's compounded more than once per year that's what you always do you press the number of years press the orange button and then you press n and there it will multiply it for you and then once you've done that you just put the 10 percent as it is because that's the interest rate compounded monthly and then we put in the 1000 rand which is the payment so i press 1000 and then i press the plus slash minus sign and then i press pmt because that's the payment and then all i need to do is just press fv to compute the future value because we're asked how much will you have at the end of two years and there it has given us 26446 rand and 92 cents I hope it's simple enough. We can move on to the third one. Let me just clear my calculator, orange, and then see. So I've cleared the memory. So what I need to do in the second one, how much will you have at the end of five years if you invest 2,000 Rand at the end of each year with an interest rate of 9% per annum compounded semi-annually? Now, what do we note with this one here? We note that the payment period is not the same as the interest compounding period. You can see here, the payment period if you invest 2000 Rand at the end of each year. So the payment occur at the end of each year, but the interest is compounded semi-annually. So the interest rate is compounded twice per year. Semi-annually means twice per year. So what do we need to do? We need to change the interest rate to make it coincide with the payment compounding, which is once per year. So what do we need to calculate? We need to calculate what is known as the effective interest rate. Now, we did the same calculation using the same financial calculator as well as using the formulas. So you'll find the links to those lessons in the description below. The effective interest rate and the nominal interest rate. But if the interest rate is compounded more than once per year and your payment period is only once per year, as we are seeing in this example, you need to change the interest rate to match the payment period. So here's how we'll calculate it. The first thing that I need to do is to press the interest rate, which is nine. So I'll press nine and then I press the orange button and then I press here where it's written I slash YR. You can see under it is written nominal. That is the nominal interest rate. If it's compounded more than once per year, it's the nominal interest rate. And then I press that one. Once I have done that, I need to say, I need to tell the calculator, how many times is this nominal interest rate compounded? Well, we are told that it's compounded semi-annually. That means it's twice per year. So I need to press two. I press the orange button and then I press PMT. You can see under it is P slash YR. Now that I've told the calculator that, I need to calculate the effective interest rate. What do I need to do? I just need to press the orange button and then I press PV. You can see under it is written EFF, which stands for effective interest rate. And that has given me an effective interest rate of 9.2%. What does the effective interest rate mean? Effective interest rate is an interest rate compounded annually. Now that we have the interest rate compounded annually, which is 9.20, it matches our payment compounding, which is one per year as well. So this is the effective interest rate, which means compounded annually, and our payment occurs annually, so it matches. So this is the interest rate that we need to use to calculate the future value of an ordinary annuity. So you need to take this down somewhere, write it down as 9.20, and then we just need to press the orange button and see to clear our calculator. And you can see that our payment per year is twice. If you press the orange and you press C, you can see it's twice per year because that's what we input into the calculator when we're calculating the interest rate compounded annually. So what do we need to do? We need to change it to once per year. Remember, the payment per year in your calculator needs to match what the payments that you're making is. So it's once per year. So I just press one orange and then PMT. And then now it is once per year. If you want to check, just press orange and see, and you can see it's once per year. Now we can put the number of years is five. So I press five. I don't have to press the orange button and N because it only occurs once per year because it's, at, it's occurring at the end of each year. And then the interest rate here is not the 9%. It's the one we just calculated. We press 9.20%, which we had just calculated. And then we press I slash YR. And then once we've done that, we put in the payment, which is the 2000 rand. And then I put in as a negative and then I press PMT 
And then the next thing that I do, I need to compute the, P, the future value, which is just pressing FV. And that has given me the answer, 12,017 rand and 21 cents. I hope it has made sense, the steps that you have to follow. For you to understand it very well, you need to look at the nominal and effective interest rate calculation using this calculator, as well as looking at the nominal interest rate explained and the effective interest rate explained well. It will make this thing very easy for you. Now that we have done the third one, let's move on to the fourth example. We are told here, how much will you have at the end of three years if you invest 500 rand at the end of each month with an interest rate of 6% per annum compounded quarterly? Now, what do we see here? We see that the interest rate is compounded quarterly, but the payments are occurring monthly. So you can see they don't match. They don't match. So let me clear my calculator, press orange, and then I press C. Now, what we said before is that if the interest rate compounding does not match the payment compounding, we need to change the interest rate compounding to match the payment compounding. Now, in this case, the interest rate is compounded quarterly while the payments are made at the end of each month. So we need to get an interest rate that is compounded monthly. So how do we do that? Well, if you checked out our other lesson on the nominal interest rate, we said that you can't go from the interest rate compounded quarterly directly to interest rate compounded monthly. You can't do that. You first have to get the interest rate compounded annually. And then once you have the interest rate compounded annually, you need to work backwards to get the interest rate compounded monthly. Now I'll show you how to do that now. Remember if it's compounded more than once per year, that is the nominal interest rate, but the effective interest rate is the interest rate compounded annually. So what do we need to do? We need to first get the effective interest rate, which is the interest rate compounded annually, and then work backwards to get the nominal interest rate, which is the interest rate, which will be compounded monthly. So let me show you how to do that. First things first, we know that it's compounded quarterly and we know that the interest rate is 6%. So what do we do? We press 6 for the percentage and then we press the orange button and then we press here with written I slash YR for the nominal interest rate. And then we know that the nominal interest rate is compounded quarterly, which is four times per year. So I need to press 4 and then you press the orange button and then press PMT to register that. And then all I need to do is to press the orange button and then press PV to get the effective interest rate. Now it has given me 6.14%. What is that? That is the interest rate compounded annually. The effective interest rate is the interest rate compounded annually. Once I have the 6.14, I now need to calculate the interest rate compounded monthly, which is the nominal interest rate. So once my screen is still by 6.14, I just need to change the payments to now 12 times per year because I want the interest rate compounded monthly. So I just press 12, I press the orange button, and then I press the PMT or P slash YR, and then I just press the orange button again, and then I press I slash YR. And there we have it, 5.97. That is the interest rate compounded monthly. Now, if you're confused in that procedure, like I said, you can check out our other lessons where we focused on the nominal and the effective interest rate using the financial calculator. Now I need to write down somewhere the 5.97. Once I have done that, I just need to press the orange button and press C, and you can see it's tw compounded 12 times per year. That's what we want. So we can start our calculation. The Yes, it's three years, so I press three, I press the orange button because it's compounded more than once per year, and then I press N. And what it has done is that it has taken the three years times the number of compoundings per year, which is 12 times per year because it's occurring each month. And then once I've done that, I need to put the interest rate, which is not the 6%, but the 5.97%, which we had calculated the nominal interest rate compounded monthly and then I press I slash YR and then I need to put in the payment of 500 rand and then I put it as a negative I press plus slash minus and then I press PMT all I need to just press is FV and there it has given me the future value of an ordinary annuity 19,659 rand 23 cents that is how much you will get if you invest 500 rand each month for a period of three years at an interest rate of six percent per annum compounded quarterly and you saw the process that we needed to follow. I hope it has made sense. I hope you have gained value from this lesson. And if you have, please subscribe to our channel, like this video, and share it to those you think it might help. Till next time, cheers.